everything I do is a, on a much higher level now because I am not suppressing myself, my true self, my inner self, who I am. I'm letting it shine and I'm being me and, and accepting that some people aren't going to like that and that's okay. Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of the Unstoppable Woman podcast. I'm Amira Alvarez. I am the founder and CEO of the Unstoppable Woman, and I am super excited to bring to the show today one of our clients who's an inner circle client. Her name is Sophie Zolman, and she runs an amazing business. And I thought it would be fantastic to interview her for, for her insights on what it takes to work in this digital world because she does a lot of that for her clients. And I thought it would be a great synergy with the podcast to, to pick her brain and get some expertise on what she does and how she helps. And I hope it helps everyone who's listening. So thanks for joining us, Sophie. It's great to have you here. Thank you for having me, Amira. I'm so excited to be here and to be able to share with your peeps and 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 then eventually my peeps too because we can do this cross crossway so to speak so excited to be here and and help your people in any way that I can okay fantastic i love it so let's start off with who you are what's your business and how you help and how long have you been doing it for so Sophie Zolman, I'm in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm an 80s pop Stevie Nicks witchy woman, certified social media and online business manager, and the owner and founder of Sophie Zone Next Level Business Support. We are an avid Harry Potter fan, and we are an all-in-one team. You don't have to lead or manage. We do all things marketing, operations, and management, allowing the mid-six-figure coach, consultant, or service provider the freedom to do what they need to do to scale to seven figures and beyond, have a life and go on vacation and unplug so that they can truly enjoy life. You know, the whole reason they most of these people started their businesses and they just find themselves so much in the business, even with a few team members that they just they just need more help. They need to really get out of it. And we help them grow and scale and have a good time and a life while doing it. I freaking love it. That's amazing. And how long have you been doing this for? I've been in the online business world for 22 years now. Woohoo! Okay, I've... so we're talking depth of experience here. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so let's talk about let's talk about what that means. So you help people. I I happen to know what you do cuz I'm your coach and I'm I know what an online business manager does. But like tactically, when you when you're looking at someone's business and they're a service provider, they're a consultant, they're a coach, they're someone who's providing a service. Are you working only with people that are already on digital, like doing a lot of digital marketing and, and selling online? Or are you helping people who might be going from say brick or mortar or um, don't know how they, they they don't necessarily have a brick or mortar mortar shop or products, but they have some sort of service. But they've been selling it offline versus online. Do you help them transition as well? Absolutely, we can work with anyone who wants to get started in the online world. That you know they're established in like you said the offline world. Uh, but we can help them get started in the online world in in various aspects, websites and technology and all of that. Where do people usually get stuck? Like, I want you to help me understand because I've been online for, you know, since I started my business. Like, I, I just started that way. But where do people get stuck? Like, are they are they challenged with creating a, a website or is it social media? Where Where do people get stuck? A lot of times they get stuck in... Not necessarily creating the website, but the website they have from their offline, so to speak, world is so basic or so old, and it's the old technology that they need to have it refreshed and redesigned into something that's more modern 
more um, user friendly for them and for the people working with them. Because a lot of the clunky old websites are just that, they're clunky old websites. But they also need the strategy and the implementation of the online marketing piece of it all because it's not just the website. They need to learn about social media. They need to learn about blogs and newsletters and marketing funnels and you know free offers, paid offers, all of those things that they can put into the online world to grow their business and to take it online to get clients you know that are not necessarily local to them. They're Internet, they can be as far as international if they want. Yeah. One of the things that I know from working with you is that you have this incredible depth of knowledge. Like when you're talking to a prospective client, you're really listening to all their challenges, what they're, what they're facing right now. And you're, you're, you're immediately thinking about well, they could be doing this and have they thought about this and what about this and we could do this. And how did you, is that just part of your nature to do that? Or is that something that you learned or do you, do you just, um, like, is it just from the depth of experience? Like you can't help but do it. Talk to me about like, cause it's an incredible, uh, skill set that you have. You, you filter very quickly. Uh, and and understand what someone's needs are. How did you learn how to do that? Well, part of it is my depth of experience, including my experience before the online world. I worked in the service world a whole lot before I actually got into working online as a freelancer and then in a business. I mean, I've been a waitress. I've been a hostess. I've been a customer service representative in the brick and mortar and in-person world. And I gained a lot of knowledge from that because it was in a ser- in service industries as it was. But I also have, you know, I, I, I blame part of it on the fact that I'm a Virgo and that, I don't mean blame. I actually, you know, I, I, I've got an innate nature of being a Virgo who is organized, detail oriented, intuitive, can really grasp it. You know, I'm, you know, I said, I'm that witchy person. I do have, um, much experience being intuitive and connecting with people on these calls that, you know, the, when, when they're telling me what's going on with them, I can really take in the energy of it, the, you know, and get the feel for, for them on a deeper level, just even on a, a simple 30 minute call, because I have myself open to them on a more intuitive and, um, I like to call it magical level, so to speak, because it is about connecting deeper than just the words that they're saying. And even, you know, the, it's body language, it's the emotion behind the words. And it's, you know, my, and then I can pull that in from my depth of experience and, and understand how to, what, what solutions or what processes, whatever it is that will help them from there, it just kind of, it kind of kicks into gear because I've done a lot of different things with a lot of different people and industries over the years. Yeah. So you talked about being a waitress and doing other things in the offline world. Tell me about the journey for you. Like, how did you go from that to this? And, and you don't have to give us your whole life story because we that's that's longer than the podcast can contain. But I, I, I'm always interested about why people started to do what they do. Like, what got you involved in this? The, the biggest instigator of me getting involved in the online business world was my second, my second child was two years old and we needed a, I, I needed to make money for the family to support the family without it all going to daycare and, you know, maintaining a car and all of those things. And I really needed to be there for my kids and my family you know, sick days, whatever they needed, you know, because when they're sick, they can't be in daycare. And then your job goes, uh, well, you know, if you don't come to work, you're fired. So I needed to be able to work with my skills and what I know in a way that was, could be done from home. And I started in the freelance online world, got onto a couple of websites where freelancers hung out and got jobs, so to speak. And I met a man in New York who is, was running an e-commerce website, an e-commerce business who needed customer service. And so I filled out the application, so to speak, put my resume up there and interviewed with him. And he hired me. And it was my first remote virtual assistant type work as a customer service rep. And then I spent almost four years with him 
eventually running his half a million dollar e-commerce business as his business manager doing everything but the the website and things like that. I handled the vendors, the orders, uh, you know, order maintenance, not the orders themselves. And I learned a massive amount of skills in what I do with him for that four, almost four years that I was with him. And, um, but this gentleman was paying me to run a half a million dollar company for $12 an hour. <laughs> Needless to say, I was a bit fried and frazzled and whatnot. So I decided to stop doing that and be a stay at home mom again. Um, but a lovely home ownership kicked in eight months later. The house fell apart. We had to fix things. So I had to get back into something. I got back into the online world, into transcription. And that's where I met all the coaches, consultants, and service providers that I now work for because I was transcribing their teleseminars back in the day before Zoom and all of that. And I was like, I love these people. I want to help these people get out there and do their thing and and support them. So I took that and launched myself back into the online world, you know, individually, not through websites. Yeah. Um, and became, you know, initially a virtual assistant and got on social media and within six months met other virtual assistants who wanted to subcontract to me. And that's when my business was born. Sophie Zill LLC was born, I incorporated and became an actual business. And basically from there, the rest is history. I love that. So I call that following the breadcrumbs of desire where you want something and then you follow it. And there's the opportunity you took you, you applied, you got the job, and you learned the skill set. You got a little grumpy about it. Why am I only paying, getting paid $12 an hour? But you, like from my perspective, you learned a huge skill set. You, you were getting paid, maybe not as much as you wanted to, but you were getting paid to learn a skill set that would take you into your next career and your next career and your next career. So you, the evolution of your career, I should say. So that's a huge, Absolutely. that's a huge, um, that was a huge opportunity for you. So that's, really that's was. fantastic. So, so if you were telling a friend, if they were considering to come, come work with you at your business, right? What would you say makes you and your business unique. And and the reason I ask this, and I ask this in almost all my my interviews, is I, I want to emphasize to people that the law of compensation says that you'll be compensated according to the need for what you do, your ability to do it, and the difficulty in replacing you. And so I'm always looking at what makes someone and their business unique because like you said there were a lot of virtual assistants out there and that that's different than an online business manager but there's there's a bunch of crossover um what makes Sophie Zo unique and and your business unique well the biggest thing that makes us unique is you get it all in one place whether it's all you know one stop shop for services or one stop shop for a team because team building can be a huge struggle and a huge stopping point for for the business owner who wants to grow the business and they know they need to hire they know they need to add people but doing that one at a time can just be it just they're just like I just don't want to do it Whereas, and they can get us as a team with the management and oversight and all the things in between for, you know, a comparable rate to maybe one employee's two tops. And they're still get they're getting a whole team and someone to manage it all too. They really literally get to do an all in one thing, whether it's team services or both. And, and they get to do that with people who have vast experience because all of my team members have vast experience in what they do. I don't hire newbies. I don't do anything like that. And I keep my team tight, well, well versed in what they do and make sure everybody is zoned in what their, is their genius. Just like I bring genius, the zone of genius to the business owner. I, my team does that too. My team literally has very few of them are jack of all trades. And if they are jack of oh, all trades, that, we Sophie. do try to keep them in their genius, but you know, throw in the jack of all trades when we need to. Yeah. Right person, right role. Like you're getting you're 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 leveraging their zone of genius and you're doing that for the business. I love that. And, and that they get a whole team. I, I love that. So it sounds like people are really important to you. Like help, like the, the helping someone, whether it's 
the person on your team or the client, but helping someone really live their genius, right? You mentioned earlier that you were doing this transcription and you were listening to all these people and you were like, I want to help them. And it, and it sounds like helping people live their genius, whether it's your team in their zone of genius or the client in their zone of genius is really important to you. Is that true? It is absolutely true. It's about living their genius. And, you know, a lot of the people I work with are very mission-based, very, and they're very visionary and creative, and they want to be able to get that out in the world. And they just don't have the, the, either they don't have the skill set themselves or they don't have the time. And the people I work with are helping other people. That's the other piece of it. Most of the time, the people I'm helping are helping other people and they can't help as many people and have the impact they want to have without being able to scale the business to work with more people in whatever way that looks like. And by working with them, I get to help them be in their zone of genius, but also take that zone of genius and impact the lives and worlds of others um, with the people they work with and what they do for those people. So it's a, it's like a cascading effect. I get, to, I'm not just helping my client or my team, I'm helping everybody involved in my business and their business because it's all of that trickle down effect, that ripple effect. The ripple effect, absolutely. If you wanna master your business, you must master your mindset first. Our next, the seven laws to seven figures summit is designed to help you do just that. This November in just three days, I am going to be giving you a roadmap of exactly what you need to do to dramatically increase your income and achieve the freedom that you desire without burnout. Podcast listeners, you can save big by visiting theunstoppablewoman.com slash breakthrough to grab your super early bird ticket today and save $800. You better hurry while the offer is still available. Bye for now and I'll see you at the summit. Let's talk a little bit about your day-to-day because our audience are other women business owners and everyone's juggling all the things, right? All the tasks. They're juggling their personal life and their business and then in their business, they're juggling all the tasks. And I get it. You juggle the tasks for your clients, but what about for yourself? How, How have you approached Mm, the day flow for yourself. And could you share one or two tips with the audience around what you do that's been really successful for you to keep yourself feeling in the flow and feeling good? There's a whole bunch of different things. One thing I definitely do is calendar my time, including the personal stuff, the mindset stuff, Uh, the treadmill. I mean, I have a calendar that tells me what I'm going to do each day. I make sure I look at it in the morning. I also supplement that with Asana, a project management system. And, you know, and I have those things to hold me accountable. I even use technology for like mindset in the morning because I have this little ritual with my my Alexa show, I have to be careful. She'll start talking, um, to do like my, my morning motivation, my focus word of the day, my horoscope for the day, little things like that. And it just, it tells me what it is for the day. And, and magically enough, many, most of the time, what it's telling me is my inspiration for the day, my word for the day are all fitting what I am doing or feeling in that moment. And I'm like, how do you know that? Because you're just te- your technology, but it just, everything, it, it just kind of falls into place. But then I have my, I have my two, my, my family helps me now too. I have my daughter and my daughter-in-law. They have their very specific roles and how they support me in this business and keeping me out of, up, out of the day to day. I mean, they'll actually come to me and say, mom, you're doing too much yourself. Where can we help you? What do you need to hand off? Do we need to create another process and SOP? What do we need to do? Because they actually hold my feet to the fire when I start getting too nose down into the nitty gritty of it and shouldn't be and, and get me back out of it. They actually, it's really great that they have that confidence in being, I mean, it's family and it's business, 
but they do, they see it and they're like, okay, you need to stop and slow down. You need to get back to this or do that. And they, they, they hold my feet to fire and hold me accountable in, in making sure that I'm doing my zone of genius and taking time for me and all of those things. Uh, because if not, I love, I love what I do so much that I will just let myself get lost in it all and go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> I love that. I love that. So I was just on a on a uh, mastermind call last night, and someone was talking about that very process, like setting up your team to have license to come to you, look in the soft the the project management software, see where you're doing too much, and be like, this we're going to we're going to figure out how to take this off of your plate and we're going to come back to you with questions and in letting your team give your team the license to to drive that and i was like that's freaking brilliant instead of you saying here i'm delegating this it's the team taking it um off your plate and in this case your team is your your daughter and your daughter-in-law but this could be anyone on your team to to step forward and do that i, I love that i love that okay so um, what, what is, what is a benefit that most people wouldn't think that you receive personally from doing the work that you do? What are the benefits I receive personally from the work that I do? Um, the biggest benefit for me is looking at my client, uh, on a zoom call or potentially in person. If we do happen to be in person first, it's the relief. I mean, I can literally see the the stress and, and all the overwhelm and whatnot leave their body and leave their energy field as we're talking about what we're going to get off their plate, what we're doing this week, what we're doing next week. How can we grow, grow the business? How can we do these things? And, and having all the people there to do it for them, the relief that I see on their faces and in their body is one of the biggest rewards I get because... That is a part of what I do is relieve them of all that stress and overwhelm and overwork. And, you know, and when I can express it, even on a, you know, a, a call before I mean, they're my client. I, I love it when I hit that nail on the head and they go, oh my gosh, I feel so good already. And I haven't even hired you let, let yet. What, what are next steps? And I'm like, well, here we go. And, and then there's, there's the, especially on the, the spiritual mindset and energetic side of things, that connection that we have can, you know, I can sense things from them and go, are you doing this? Or did something happen to where you're feeling like this? And they were like, well, yeah, how did you know? And it's like, well, I just kind of sensed it. Let, do we need to talk this through? Can, is there something I can do there? Cause I, I, I can, I kind of go that extra mile a little bit in, in that sense with using my intuition and those things to really go deeper in it. It's not just the business. It's not just the tasks and the management and the planning. It's really taking care of them as a person too. And, and, and letting, making sure they're, they're doing the things that make them feel better and, and stay open and energetic and, and don't, you know, get run down, even if it's not the business side of things that's running them down. Yeah. I really hear there that you have this intuitive sense and that you, you really, you have this, this heart of service, heart of support, and that that really, really drives you. What is, what is one thing that you know now that you didn't know when you first started your, your business? So I, I, just to frame this up, like, you know, you know, the coaching that I do, I'm always talking about the law of relativity and the perspective from which you're looking at a, a situation. So now you're, you're years in, that's a different kind of perspective. So what, it, what do you know now that you didn't know when you first started your business? Not just like, uh, not just specific about like the technical stuff that you do, but like, like uh, the, the vision of, of, of business, how you approach business. Well, I mean, one of the biggest lessons I learned uh, was, you know, don't put your eggs all in one basket. And as much as you think you know a person, a company, a client, or whatever, there is always the potentiality for it to not work out. But it's and it's okay. You have to have a plan to be able to recover from that because I did that. I lost it all by putting my eggs in one basket and started over. And the biggest part of that was when 
tragedy happens when a big, you know, buffoonish thing happened, not buffoonish, that's not the right, but you know, when tragedy strikes and something like that, that it is a blessing. You may be traumatized in the moment, you may be devastated in the moment, but it really is a blessing to learn from and to give you the opportunity to start again and be, be able to do something even better than you were ever doing before, because that's what opened up for me when I did lose it all and start over is I got to create the business I have now, which is the best incarnation of my business and what I do ever. And it wouldn't have happened if I had stayed where I was back then, if that hadn't happened, if that incident of uh, that seems really negative and horrific in the moment was really a blessing and and having the support I had, it it really brought out the people around me, not just my coach and mentor, but my family, my husband, my team, everything that, you know, because I had a small team then, even though I was exclusive, it just everything, everybody stepped up to support me and let me see that and supported. I was, I'm loved, I'm supported. And, you know, what do we need to do to get you back on your feet and get you going again sooner rather than later? They didn't even let me sit there and wallow in it. They're like, okay, you have 24 hours and then we're going to, we're going to go from there. And I'm like, well, okay. And, and it really is, it's, you know, the experience. And because I was so experienced at that moment, it was, easier than I thought to start over and create something new and better. And I wouldn't have been able to do that. You know, starting over is different than starting, but because I started a business and did all that and learned so much in the, the years before I changed, you know, that happened, I was able to take that and people, you know, talk to me. It was like, my husband was like, you know what to do. You, you know what you, you can do this, you know, it's mm-hmm. like, and you know, he, nobody let me lose confidence in myself, my abilities, who I am. And, and it, it allowed me to really step into a whole new thing and, and build what is really amazing to me and, and that I love mm. better than I ever did before. I love it. I love it. I love it. That's such a great perspective. How has learning the laws, what you and I have been working with, plus all the inner game pieces and the tactical outer game stuff as well. But I'm, you know, I, I've worked with Sophie on the tactical outer, how to like create offers, pricing, um, do consultations, all sorts of tactical things. But I think some of the biggest shifts that you've had have been on the identity side and the inner game shifts. How, in your own words, can you talk about what what's important to you about that and why not just working with me i don't care about me but like your story in terms of i mean i do care about myself but that's not the the point here <laughs> right. uh, it, it's more like what's been transformative about that for you why has that been so important how has that upped your game the biggest upping of my game in the last uh, year and a half or so is learning from the laws and the universe about authenticity and, and, and being yourself and being open to opportunities instead of trying to force things to, uh, you know, the masculine and feminine energies of it all, the, um, you know, just like letting go and stepping into the vibration of who I really am because for years I was that prim and proper serious business woman who didn't talk about her woo woo, who didn't really, I mean, I have my, my Harry Potter decorations, but I didn't really talk about it. And, you know, and I didn't dress the way that I like to dress. I mean, my transformation through working with you and the laws and the inner game of things brought me, I mean, I cleaned out my closet and bought new clothes and went, you know, bought things that I hadn't worn in years because I didn't think it was appropriate to wear in business. And it's like, why not? Yeah. So let me, let me interrupt for those of you who are listening to the podcast and not watching it on YouTube. She is in her office and behind her, she has a Hogwarts, um, train station sign. And, um, I'm looking at you and you look perfectly professional to me, but it's a, um, blue paisley shirt and i don't know what the before was but it was just not 
her energy. I mean, I know what the before was, but the, 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 it, this does not look particularly non prim and proper. It just looks blue and paisley to me. But there's a, she feels more aligned with who she truly is. And she's able to now get on a podcast and talk about her Alexa that says what her horoscope is and all this sort of stuff. And she's, she's able to express herself and be that in her business and not be so tamped down and, um, and quite frankly, in my words, not yours, but quite frankly, afraid to be who you were and who you are. And that's, that's suppression. That's fear. That, and, and that's a very hard way to live. It makes it like you have to watch every single word you're, you're saying and everything you're doing. And that's like walking on eggshells and it, and it sucks. Absolutely. 100%. That is, that is, those are your words, but that does express it. I, you know, I was walking on eggshells. I wasn't fully expressing myself in any way, you know, and, and I was like, I was worried about being judged for what I wore and what I said. And, and, and I, it took me forever to even venture into video online because, as much as I teach my clients that it's, you know, it's not about how you look, it's do it. And, you know, I still refrained from doing video and being me on video, even when I did video, because, you know, I can be this boisterous, you know, use my hands, talk kind of funny and, and whatever. And, you know, I used to judge myself and going, no one wants to see that. That's not a professional business person or, Ooh, look what I, you know, and it's like, wait a minute, stop that, you know, be who I am, open up to all that there is by being who I am and expressing it. And, and it has just been night and day in, in all aspects, not just in my business, in my personal life, in my family life, everything I do is a, on a much higher level now because I am not suppressing myself, my true self, my inner self, who I am. I'm letting it shine and I'm being me and and accepting that some people aren't going to like that and that's okay. Yeah, no, I love it. I love it. Okay. What's one thing that you do to continue to up your game, to continue to grow? Because as you know, if you're not growing, you're dying, right? I continue to find people and places and things, so to speak, that keep me in the vibration, that keep me in the zone, that don't, I mean, you know, stuff happens and you do, you have a bad day or whatever, but I surround myself with those things to be able to keep myself on that higher vibration as much as possible to remind me if I'm, if I'm starting to feel in the dumps or whatever, and I look at something on my desk, I mean, I have these little things on my desk that are like, okay, or I'll turn around and look at all the Harry Potter stuff in my office or, you know, any number of things. And, you know, and I'll, I'll lean into my groups. I'll lean into, you know, Amira, I'm having this weird day. And, you know, I talk to people too. I talk to Amira. I talk to the other people in the coaching program and, and other people in, in like mentorships and groups that I belong to surrounding myself with the things and the people and the ability to lean in when things seem to be going wonky in whatever way that is and continuing to work with people nonstop. I will never stop working with mentors, masterminds, and coaches uh, because if you do, you get stuck and stagnant and you you think you know it all, but you don't. <laughs> yeah. You're in the forest for the trees. You can't see your own stuff sometimes. Sometimes you can, but sometimes you can't. So, okay. Yep. Before I ask my final questions, where can people find you if they want to connect with you on social or check out your website? Where can they find you? The website is sophiezo.com, S-O-P-H-I-E-Z as in zebra, O.com. I'm on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Clubhouse, um, pretty much everywhere but Snapchat and TikTok. Um, and, uh, and, and I have a blog and I have a podcast myself, Building Your Empire with Sophie Zo. You can find me there and learn a lot about what we do and, and, and those kinds of things there. Do you share a lot of, uh, sort of online tech hacks on, on the podcast? Season one was all about the online business tech hacks and, and what you need to do to grow your business. This, this season that we're currently in till the end of the year is guest experts coming in with 
that kind of advice, but also other types of advice that they've learned along the way for scaling a business. And, and a little prelude into next season is I'm getting back into a lot of the tech tips, tips and hacks. And it's going to be a balance of those things and a few guests here and there. We're going to like wrap it up into a pretty picture of, of both, of both worlds for the next season. Great. I love it. I love it. So what do you love most about yourself, Sophie? I love my outgoing personality and the, I love the witchiness about me, the woo woo, the, the spiritual side of me, um, that really allows me to tap into the deeper aspects of everything. I, I love the, the, my eighties pop Stevie Nicks, witchy woman. I love that about me. And I love, I love being that person and, and what it does for me and the people around me. Yeah. I love that too. I love that too. So my final question for you is what makes you an unstoppable woman? I will not give up. I will persist and pursue and focus on that desire that I have. And when, even when I hit, you know, achieve one of my desires, I'm always, what's the next one? What's the next one? And I just continuing to pursue that, which I desire on all levels in all ways and never stopping because when you stop, it gets boring and it gets, you know, you get, you know, it's just status quo. I don't want the status quo. I want to always be doing something, having fun, whatever it is. I always want to be striving for something, uh, you know, that I desire, whether it be personal business or otherwise. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I want you to, I want to, I want to thank you for your generosity of spirit. I want to thank you for how you've expressed yourself. I think I want to I I, I want that to be a big part of this because that's such a part of your journey is is really unleashing the the truth of who you are. And when you do that, it's palpable. It it is um such a beautiful aspect of you and and keep shining that and shining it brightly. So thank you so much for joining us. I know people will love hearing your tips and strategies and I'll talk to you soon. All righty. Thanks for having me. It was really great to be here. Thanks. Thanks. 